Hello again and welcome to another Mordor and Glory Warhammer 40k video. In today's video, I want to have a little chit and dare I say chat about a new idea I've had for a guard playstyle. You see, recently I've been playing a lot of mech guard and I have been having a great time with it. Having lots of armoured fist squads barreling across the table supported by firepower has not only been a ton of fun, it's also been highly effective. However, at the same time, the more that I have played this style of guard army, the more that I have become acutely aware of a couple of key weaknesses. Ones that I think are going to be difficult to resolve if we continue down the traditional mech guard mindset. Fundamentally, the issue with mechanized guard is orders. How few of them you have and how reliant you are on just a couple of linchpin units for them. For example, the list that I took to Adepticon performed really well. I ended up going three and one at that super major, but it only had three orders. I had six chimeras with some infantry inside. I had a couple of normal Russes, and then I had two tank commanders, one of which had Grand Strategist. This really limited the amount of orders I could do, and I had to essentially decide if my artillery, because I had a couple of bastards in there as well, were going to be hitting accurately, or if I was going to have my tanks hitting accurately. But at the same time, I didn't have any orders for my tank commanders. So a lot of my firepower, a lot of my direct damage was going to be hitting on fours. Any guard commander worth his salt will tell you that hitting on fours is wholly unreliable. It rarely feels like a 50-50 chance. There's so many factors that go into the game and it leaves you very, very susceptible to minus one to hit modifiers. Now, please don't get the wrong end of the stick. I really enjoyed using that mech guard list and it was very powerful and it was effective. But being objective and taking a step back for a moment, those two tank commanders were a real Achilles heel to the list. And if my opponents had gone after those tank commanders and taken them out, it would have really limited my firepower. And I had to put a huge amount of effort into essentially keeping my opponents distracted, shoving chimeras down their throat and all that kind of stuff in order to try and take the focus away from the tank commanders who were actually the main force multipliers in the army. And in fact, the one game that I lost at Depticon was against a Custodes force, and they had just two tanks, just two of the Caladus tanks, I believe it is, with the heavy blaze cannons. And in that situation, when I had an opponent who could reach out and delete my tank commanders, it really limited my capability to push forward. Whenever I tried to make a big push, my opponent's Caladuses would come out and start picking off my armor fairly quickly. And so, sure, it was fine when I was fighting opponents that didn't have that much long range, and it was fine when I was able to essentially have free reign in the shooting phase, but when my opponent started shooting back heavily, I definitely noticed that my tank commanders were vulnerable. And it's these lessons learned and observations which got me thinking. Thinking about how we can evolve the current mech guard mindset and try out an idea that instead of relying upon main battle tanks to support our armored fist squads, we move towards something else. And the idea that I have been playing with and that I've been chatting with you guys in a few of the live streams as well, has been rather than mechanized guard, but recon guard. This is where essentially we take out a lot of the Lehman Russes, if not all of the Lehman Russes, and we replace them with Sentinels. Sentinels have a number of advantages over Lehman Russes when used in a mechanized playstyle. Firstly, they can do the same role as the Lehman Russes because they have a lot of wound density and especially armor sentinels also have a great armor save. But also they have a lot of firepower. A unit of sentinels armed with three last cannons and 300 killer missiles has the ability to really deliver a concentrated amount of damage output onto a single target. And what you tend to find in mech guard is your chimeras are able to deal with a lot of the horde and the chaff because each one has got double heavy flame or double heavy bolter and there's lads gonna raise and there's heavy stubbers on top. And what you really need your Lehman Russes to be doing is going after 
the big boys. On top of this, Sentinels have the regiment keyword, which is huge. Firstly, it gives you access to the reinforcement stratagem. And you guys know how much I love that reinforcement stratagem. And you don't tend to have a lot of place to spend your CP with MechGuard outside of maybe popping smoke. Furthermore, it allows your Sentinels to receive orders from infantry officers. And you don't have to rely on tank commanders. The big issue with tank commanders, like I said, they, they don't really get orders themselves. Unless you take the Lord Solar. But I've found it really difficult to have the Lord Solar and tank commanders and armored fist units and artillery all in one area whenever i try and include the lord solar whether it's on its own or in a lord solar command blob i find i have to really cut out other parts of the army that i'd rather wouldn't i have to drop an armored fist unit and i'm just telling you now whenever i've tried to run just five mechanized squads it's not been enough. I always need that six one, or I have to drop a main tank, but suddenly I'm reducing a lot of the damage output I've got. The Lord Solar, it can be a bit tricky to squeeze him into the list along with everything else that you need to make a nice balanced guard army. Like I said, often your tank commanders are hitting on a four plus, and so that means if you've got four direct damage dealers, two tank commanders, and you've got two regular Russes or two exterminators where they may be or a Rogal Dawn in there but you've got four main damage dealers but only half of them are hitting on threes and hitting on threes is so important for the guard you need to be leveraging take aim massively it's one of the best orders we have right now but sentinels don't have that issue because they can like I said receive orders from infantry officers and thanks to the Chimera's mobile command vehicle ability you can have officers inside your Chimera's ordering out to the sentinels that are next to them and suddenly all of your damage dealing units are hitting on threes this makes them much more accurate and also gives you an insurance if someone decides to start throwing around some minus one to hit modifiers because at worst you go back to hitting on fours and unlike lemurus tank commanders you won't be hitting on fives and finally Swapping out your tank sentinels is actually relatively easy. A squadron of sentinels comes in at 180 points. A Lemus battle tank, a Lemus exterminator, they're also 180 points. If you swap out a sentinel for a tank commander, you actually, especially if it's got grand strategies, end up saving yourself 40 points. And so this is some points left over that you can then start putting into buying officers for your sentinel units. So with all of these ideas buzzing through my head, I ended up throwing together a couple of army lists and I'm going to share them with you now and let me know what you think. The first one was essentially an adaptation of that Adepticon style army. It had six units of Katachans inside six Chimeras. I then had sort of four tanks, I swapped out for four units of Sentinels, three Scout, one Armoured. All the Sentinels were equipped with LAS cannons, giving me loads and loads of anti-tank. 12 LAS cannons, 12 Hunter Killer missiles. Plus you've got the Hunter Killer missiles on the Chimera as well. We've got like 18 Hunter Killer missiles, I think. Loads of anti-big stuff. And the Chimeras have all got double heavy flamer. And all the Kachans inside have also got double flamer. So that's anti-infantry covered there as well. Inside the Chimeras, I ended up going for Creed, and I also had Strachan. Now, Strachan's actually, like, leading one of the Kachan units, but Creed's just in there, like, lone wolfing it, just in the Chimera with a couple of Kachan units. And so the idea would be that I would have, essentially, two of these armored fist platoons you know going down the flanks i, mean, I could break them down to small units if i wanted to but essentially have three chimeras with two units of sentinels near the command chimera and do the same again on the other flank and so that this would give me lots of this would give me six heavy flamers six regular flamers and three heavy stubbers and six las cannons and 900 kind of missiles in each one of these little micro armored fist platoons and then for indirect fire i would just go with the usual i'd have a couple of basilisks in there now this list actually had about 110 points left over at the time of recording points obviously can change and so my thinking was that I can use that 110 points for either maybe a couple of units of Scions, just leave them open in case the points do change a little bit. And yes, my Basilisk wouldn't have any orders, but because I've got so many Scout Sentinels in the army, what I would do is daring recon something, and then my Basilisk would be hitting on three, three rolling ones anyway. So it's kind of like they've got a pseudo order. So in total, we would be looking at six units of Catachans inside six Chimeras, one Strachan, one Creed, 
three of the Scout Sentinels, all lads cannons, one unit of armor sentinels, all lads cannons, a couple of basilisks, and about 100 points left over in the bank. Now, I like that first list because it's somewhat battle tested and it's easy for me to get my head around. Take the four tanks, swap them out for four units of sentinels, bing bang boom. But the second list, I think, is a little bit more wacky, a little bit out there, and it does break a couple of the MG rules of having a nice balanced force of like infantry first, then having more tanks and just seasoning with artillery. The second list has a more equal split of artillery and also sentinels. So again, we've got the six units of chimeras, and each chimera has got Kachans inside. Everyone's got the double heavy flamer. Everyone's got the flamers on the Kachans. Okay, so. Quad Flamer Pseudo Hellhound Objective Control to uh, Chimeras all the way. We then just have three units of Scout Sentinels, no armor Sentinels this time. Okay, all with Lads Cannon still, all with Hunter Killer Missiles. We then just have Strachan and then like Acadian Castellan. That's it. And then we have three Basilisks and the Lord Solar. And the Lord Solar hasn't got anyone with him, he's just Lone Wolf in it. And the idea is. In the quintessential, typical L-shaped ruin that's always in everyone's deployment zone, have three basilisks and just have the Lord Solar next to them. And so the Lord Solar is going to be ordering those basilisks every single turn, and they're, or they could be Earth Shakers, you have the points change, whatever. He's going to order those three artillery pieces every single turn. And then they're going to be hitting on two re-rolling ones thanks to the Scout Sentinels. And so, even though I've only got three main damage dealers, I've got a lot of indirect fire, and my Basilis are hitting at max capability, and my Sentinels are still enough orders for them to be hitting on threes as well. And the reason I quite like the second list is it's less susceptible to units hiding at a line of sight, because there's more artillery, and it's got a lot of medium firepower. I feel like the problem with that first list is that it's a lot of lads cannons, which are great into vehicles, but not as good into elite stuff. And there's a lot of chaff firepower, which again, isn't as good into elite stuff. But that third list, we've got loads of strength eight, AP minus two, damage two shots, or whatever the artillery may be. So, you know, it might be reducers, which have got damage three, but the point is we've got lots of that intermediate firepower, and we can also take advantage of lethal hits and the detachment rule. I think both of these lists are totally viable and they are lists that I could run right away and take to tournaments and stuff. But the big question I have for you guys is, what do you think? What do you think about the army list? And what do you think about this concept of recon guard overall? I know it may chafe against the traditional mindset of Lehman Russes and main battle tanks, metal boxes. I know it kind of chafes against that for me as well, but I think there is some merit to this idea. Is there anyone out there who's tried this already? Did it work for you? Or unfortunately, did it not translate from paper to the tabletop? If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to smash that like button. And as always, subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is a lucky day.